So let's say that you've created your character in Koikatsu Character Maker. You've played the visual novel. Uh, you've had a lot of fun with that. But then you've noticed that there's this program in the folder called Carl Studio. Now, what what is that? Or you've noticed that there's these pictures that you see on maybe the Discord or Twitter of other users who've been playing the game, and you would want to know how they make those. Well, I just answered my first question with the second one. Basically, Kara Studio is your own photography application that will allow you to pose your character however you like and take a snapshot that you can share with the world or use for whatever purpose you like. Uh, I've used this to make animations and small comics, things like that. And it really expands the boundaries of what Koikatsu can do and can be used for. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the concept of Kara Studio. Uh, when you start up the program, you're not going to see this map here. You're going to see nothing. It's going to be a solid color, probably not pink, but all right. So if we go to system, you can actually customize, you know, the background color, all of this stuff. So when you start out, you can go to add and then choose a place, I guess. Let's go to library. So these are uh, the in-game maps that you can use in your pictures. Next thing you probably want to do is add a character. So let's go in here, add one of the girls. Let's just make it easy. Go with, uh, go with uh, Misa to keep it consistent with our tutorials. To actually pose her, we could do a few things. Now there's this workspace here, which is pretty, pretty helpful. You click on a, a name and it'll select that person. You can tell it's selected because there's this thing down here that will actually if you drag these arrows you can move your character in case you didn't know you can move the camera around with the middle click up and down and forward and backward with the right click and then rotate it with the left click and to focus on what you're selecting so that so let's say you get way far off and you don't want to like drag your mouse all the way back over there so if you just select the object you want to go to and press the f key it will snap you to it just some little tips for movement so let's uh, drag misa down to the floor and if you go into the anim tab there's a list of animations you can choose from uh, by default to kind of get you started with posing so you can say basic there's a, a whole variety of poses that you can choose from so you can do that and if the pose is animated you can set the animation speed here let's say we want her over by this table so if you turn on on the side here th these are the different options you can have so axis will turn on and off that axis trans parallel i think that's translating along the parallel axis or whatever that will allow you to scoot things according to the xyz so like so imagine there was like a wall here and you could just like move her along the wall basically so we go over here i think i kind of want her like leaning over the table just like hey what's up what we can do is rotate so you can go down to these little buttons here to change between moving, rotating, and resizing. Or you could press W, E, and R, which will move between these. Let's change to rotation. And then, so we select the green wheel so it can rotate her around that way. And so we can move her like that and we can just bring her forward. So that by itself would be, I don't know, it would be all right, but you kind of you kind of want a little bit of personality, I would say. I, I kind of want her to lean over the table, you know? What we can do is now that we have the animation set up and we have the positioning set up, we can actually move into kinematics to refine our pose. So there's there's basically, I would say there's three different ways you can pose your character in kinematics. There's FK, IK, and then there's a combination of both. Let me to show you what I'm what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna hit refer to animation. This will copy all of the posing to the FK uh, data. So we hit active. And so here, let me let me turn on the the bones here. Okay, draw lines there. So we have basically the skeleton here that we can modify any way we want. You know, I I don't tend to use this method mostly because the only way you can move things around is through rotation, which thinking about rotating each of these to be precisely where they are, I, I, would, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemies. So for me, I tend to go with the combination FK and IK. And with IK, I think it is basically the same thing as the combination, except it's missing a few things. So I would just go with this. So we're gonna refer to animation and then turn this on. 
So that means that the only things that you need to rotate are the uh, the neck and head, and also once if you want to turn them on the, the the fingers. Okay. So what we want to do is just simply lean her over onto the table. So what we can do is uh, move her shoulders forward and we'll try to take the hands along with them. And actually there's a very easy way to do this involving uh, this this window right here called KKPE. I mean, you could, I mean, this is what I, I did in, in the beginning. You could just select this, drag it over, you know, select this, drag it over and just painstakingly do that. But I found a much easier method is to just go into this window here, select what part of the body you want to move. You can actually select multiple parts at once. So we hold control and we keep selecting. We're just using, we're moving the shoulder, the, okay, so the, the elbow is actually the blue, the blue orbs here. And those actually control where her elbow is pointing. It's pretty cool. So we want to move all of these forward and down a little bit. Probably it would be the X direction. No, I was wrong. Okay. So you can, you can also control Z anything you do in here to undo. Well, we're going to move this, try to move this forward and down. And to make it bend the way we want, I think we want to move this as well. Like so. So just find a good spot that doesn't look too awkward. For the for the for the body itself, never minding the arms or the head, that looks about okay. So what we can do from here is just kind of fix it up. So let's pull the head back up. And actually we can adjust it so that she's always looking at the camera just to make it easier we might even give her a different expression so in the gaze section you can do follow or adjust but yeah so I'm gonna do follow and then so in the brows eyes and mouth section we can adjust the expression so we might we might just do a regular smile like like that that'd be fine the list of numbers here actually corresponds to the list of expressions let me open this up whoa Hey boy, hey. No, 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 no. So each number in that list corresponds to one of these options. Set her eyes to smiling so that so that it's just nice. It just looks nice, okay? Get off my case, jeez. All right. Might even do that. That could, that looks kind of sweet. We can use the same method to move her hand, I suppose. I mean, we can also move it manually with the, you know, like this. But I do like to use the uh, the KKPE window. What if we do, hold on, what if we do this? And then we get her eyes looking down. That's too sweet, Oh, What if instead of in front of her, her hand is resting on the table. That's not too hard to do. And also, if you want to change the hands just in a quick and easy way, you can uh, do this. So we can have her hand resting on the table like that. So we can, uh, let's rotate the hand to where it's flat. Maybe like facing towards the table. Then we could just move it down. Not too hard. And uh, if we want to do some minute changes, we could turn on the uh, go into here so we can enable the control of the right hand. Yes, I, I, I know my hands. I know my, my left and versus right. All right. So we got we got we got to do this. So we can rotate it any way we want to. So we're just going to bring it up just so it's on top of the table. And so that looks kind of nice. We could even tilt her head a little bit and then tilt the hand a little bit to compensate. Here, so press F to focus on it so that we can move around it freely. And I do that. So then we can move this maybe where the camera would be a little bit. Yeah, so she's like, what's up? How you doing? We could even take her foot, move it up. This is all just messing around this is this is where the artist in you can come out cool thing about posing characters um this core body thing here it's they call it body in kkpe it's just the middle it's like the waist you can actually move it and get some really interesting results so we can have her like leaning a little bit like this or a little bit like this make it just just a little bit more 
curvaceous. All right, so you might be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, the light's hitting her from this side. How can I get it to hit her from this side? Well, that's easy. We just go into system, and this is where you can adjust your character lighting. Similar to in Kara Maker, where you can adjust this light direction. You can do the same in, in the studio. Horizontal light, move it around. One thing that's really helped me when I've been trying to improve is looking at YouTube tutorials on lighting shots, composition, things like that. It has been a big help. So we have this picture. We want to find a good spot for the camera in this picture. So let's press space bar to disable all the UI elements. And actually we can deselect Misa by clicking her twice. Now you can also find a good field of view for the camera. So you know how cameras all have like lenses that you can adjust, you know, the length of the lens, it'll give you like a fuller view or a more focused view. So you can do that too with the equals button and the right bracket button on the US United States keyboard. Maybe we could move the leg up a little bit. I do want her to like showing that she's like lifting a leg. We want to have it be subtle enough and actually to make to, to make it easier you can do go with the cliche of like the bow legs or like the legs face inwards so similar to the elbows you have the blue knee parts which also point towards where they point that was a, that was a good sentence maybe move this foot out a little bit just a bit kind of like that I would say somewhere around here we can move the hand down a little bit just so that it's not like hovering above the table, it's like actually on, on the table. Sometimes it's okay to just kind of like put things into things. Like, okay, let me be less ambiguous with that statement. Sometimes it's okay to let objects clip to make sure that they look, they don't look like they're doing like the hover hands thing. All right, so then we can just save it uh, into one of these cameras. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, I just chose chose a random camera. So now, when, when you do your adjustments and you want to get the shot back to where it was, you just press on this camera button and there it is. So what we can do now is, obviously we would want to take the picture, um, but actually there's some things we can do to enhance the picture even before we take it. So down here there's a lot of options. So you can have uh, your shading type, which in case you didn't notice, um, even in Car Studio, I have a different shading type selected and things like that. So if you go into options in Koikatu, you can actually change the shading type, but in the studio, it's in this menu here, so you change the shading type. Uh, I chose Deep Smooth Shadows 3 because I like how realistic the shadows look. Uh, if there's one with, look, if there's one with more realistic shadows, I want to switch to it, but I, I haven't found one. So then we just take shadow density if you want to like, I don't know, make it less shaded, I, I guess, if that's your, your, what you're uh, looking for. Outline thickness, obviously, you know, your cartoony outline, you can take it or leave it. I, 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 I don't, oh, thank you, Vine Sauce. I don't usually go with the outline because I just don't like it. Okay. So then your shadow color, that's pretty important because that will affect like the tone of uh, the shading, shaded areas, especially on characters so what I've done is I've chosen like a dark red yeah just a just a subtle red it's mostly black but subtle red uh, self shadowing that will be whether the model can cast shadows on itself I haven't found a, a, a reason why you wouldn't use self shadowing so it's always I guess it's worth it to, to kind of turn it off and on just to see if this if a particular shot would look better without it uh, we've got sun shafts I guess coming through the windows uh, you can also add that yourself later. I might, I, I'm definitely going to make tutorials on like, you know, post-processing, all of the, all the kit and caboodle. All right, then we got the fog. If we want to add a little bit of fog, I guess. Uh, vignette. It's just that subtle edge depth of field. This one's very useful for, for making focused pictures. So we, we can adjust basically where the focus of the image is. Um, you can also do that externally as well. And ambient occlusion, I would not mess with this too much because back when I was first making pictures, I messed with it too much and it gave the characters this weird banding effect that just did not look good at all. You might turn it off, but just with this default setting, there is it does add some subtle shading where you where you might want it. 
And then there's the scene shade color adjustment, which is really cool. You can kind of have your own LUTs, which I forget what that stands for, but it basically allows you to, it's basically filters for the, for the colors. So there's the Kolkata defaults of midday, evening, nighttime. So if you notice in certain scenes, you can choose midday, evening, or night, and it'll change the colors of the scene depending. So that's cool. But then there's also like these modded ones that are crazy. Um, I've chosen cotton candy and I just gave it a really small amount. The more to the right this slider is, the more uh, the, the less the LUT affects the image. If we move it back, we can see this is what it's applying to the image. So this is 100%. Uh, and this is like, you can kind of back off of it. So once you have all of those set up, if you, if you ever want to like change the default um, for these, so that every time you open up Cara Studio, it it shows it has these settings that you want. If you just hit F1, um, and you uh, I think if you search for default, uh, yes, default param editor. So set default scene parameters. Save current as default, so that you can have all these settings be the same every time you start up the thing. So we want to take the picture. Uh, we turn off the things. It doesn't actually matter if you turn them off, but I, I like to turn them off. If you g press F1 again and you look, you type uh, screenshot, it should bring up the screenshot settings. So uh, what I want to focus on is this render output resolution. This will let you take 4K screenshots instead of whatever resolution your window is. This will help you with you know, high resolutions and stuff like that so that you can really get the most quality out of your work. So 3840 by 2160 is my chosen one. You can do 1080p, you can do 720. All right, so now that that's set up, you just hit go back to your camera angle and then just press F11. There you go. And your picture will fall into the, you just go into user data and then you go into cap and that will have your screenshot. And uh, what I've done is I've taken my cap folder and I have organized it by character and by type of screenshot so that I can kind of keep track of my, uh, my work. In case you were wondering, this is how I make my YouTube thumbnails. I just use this, this program. So before you close out of Carol Studio, you do want to hit save. You can just save with control S. So what it will do is just save into your, your folder like that. And uh, and so if you go to system, uh, load, make sure there's nothing lewd here, yeah. Okay, well, nothing too lewd. Anyway, you can find your, your work and just load it back up and it'll be right where you left it. Obviously there's more to this than just characters. You can add items. And if you have HF patch, there will be a whole smorgasbord of items that you can mess with, I guess to just show you there is this menu where you can change the clothing options and you know you should be able to figure out what to do with all of these you can make her all sweaty if you want so that's been a an introduction to the Kara studio within koikatsu um i hope that anybody who was wondering what that was kind of has an idea now and maybe uh would be inspired to get started making their own artworks so i'll see you in the next video Bye.